Hello everyone, today in this video we will be discussing the first module of parallel computing and uh, in this video I have included the questions which are most repeated ones from the previous papers, the previous scheme papers where, wherever the subject was. Don't miss any of these questions, these are uh, if you score, if you want to score more than 80% marks, you can refer these questions, these are the most important ones, okay. So don't miss any of these questions and before starting please do like and subscribe, it helps make more videos like this and if you want the pdf of this you can dm me on instagram here so without wasting more time let's get started with the first question which is differentiate between simd and mimd systems okay so the subject parallel computing is all about instructions execution okay simd means single instruction and multiple data there is one instruction but there will be multiple data okay that is what is called a uh, single instruction multiple data the same instruction would be executed on different data uh, data sets okay that is called as single instruction multiple data set and second one is mimd is multiple instruction multiple data that means multiple instructions will be executed on multiple data okay next is simd all processing elements execute same instruction at a time in MIMD, each processing element can execute different instructions independently. Since there are multiple instructions, different instructions can be selected. Okay. Next is data handling. Same operation is performed on multiple data items. Okay. And in MIMD, different option can be performed on different data items. Okay. Control unit. One control unit is for all processing elements. And in this, each processing element has its own control unit. Applications is in image processing, graph processing and scientific computations whereas MIMD is multiprocessing system, server and distributed computing. Complexity SIMD is simpler and MIMD is more complex as it's obvious because it is having multiple instructions, right? And parallelism, data parallelism is there in SIMD but it is, uh, the task parallelism is present in MIMD. Okay, you have to write any five of the differences, okay? Next is list the key components of SIMD vector processor. So in single instruction multiple data, there are vectors. For each vectors, inside that, the data will be stored. Instructions and the data will be stored. To process this vector, there will be vector processor. Okay, so in SIMD vector processor, we have first vector registers. These registers are capable of storing a vector of operands and operating, operating systems simultaneously on their contents. Okay, vector length is fixed by the system that can range from 4 to 256 uh, 64-bit elements. Okay, that is vector register where the data and instructions are stored. Vectorized and pipeline functional units, wherever the operations like addition, subtraction, and all are performed, where the answer is to be stored, those operations answer will be stored in vectorized and pipeline functional units. Next is vector instructions. What is to be done? Okay, this instruction that operate on vectors rather than scalars. If the vector uh, length is vector length, these instructions have a great virtue that a simple loop such as this will be uh, eliminated. If we use vector length, instead of finding out the length by a for loop, we can directly find, uh, calculate it using vector length. Okay, it is more convenient and faster. Next is interleaved memory. Okay, the memory has multiple banks that can be accessed more or less independently. Okay, so many different partitions are there where the data will be stored. Okay, and each can be accessed independently. After accessing one bank, there will be a delay before it can be reaccessed. But a different bank can be accessed much sooner. You got the point? If there is a bank, you access this for some data, then uh, to access it again, there will be some delay. But meanwhile, you can access any other bank in the same time. Okay. In that, there will be no delay. So, if elements of a vector are distributed across multiple banks, there can be little to no delay in loading, storing successive elements. Suppose that there is just one bank where all the data is stored. To access it multiple times, you will have to wait for some time. But what if the data is distributed and stored in different banks? You can access this, then this, then this without any delay. That will make the execution faster. Okay, that is the interleaved memory. Strided memory access and hardware scatter gather. Okay, there are two types which is strided memory and scatter gather memory. Okay, both the types are accessed. Like for example, it will be accessed in fixed intervals, first uh, first element, then fifth element, then nine element and so on, instead of consecutive. Okay, it will be leaving two elements and accessing, leaving two elements and accessing, just to increase the performance. Okay. With a neat diagram, elaborate MIMD systems. Multiple instruction, multiple data. Okay. These systems support simultaneous instruction streams operating on different datas. Okay. There will be multiple datas, there will be multiple instructions, 
skipping performed uh, simultaneously okay mmd system consists of a con uh, collection of fully independent processing units okay and it has its own control unit and its own data path in smd it is not like that mimd are usually asynchronous any operation can happen in any sequence there is no sync between each of these instructions they are performed independently whereas in smd there will be sync okay some synchronization will be there next is uh, in shared memory system a collection of autonomous processors are connected to memory share system and in distributed system each one will be having its own private memory so if you see this diagram this is called as the shared system why because memory is shared between all the cpus right but in the distributed we will be having memory each having separate memory okay so that is the difference between shared and distributed memory system next is illustrate shared memory interconnects with a neat diagram okay so the most widely available shared memory system or the multi core processor is the multiple cpus okay on a single chip typically each will have a private level 1 cache while other caches may not be shared between the cores okay so there are two types of access in it uniform memory access and non uniform memory access okay so in this case this is a uniform memory access multiple core here there will be different uh, multiple cores in a single chip okay and each will be interconnected to the memory okay this is a uniform memory access okay second one is non non uniform memory access this means all the data is not being taken from memory but the data can be exchanged between the chips also okay so it will be more faster the numa multi core system okay next is explain cache coherence with an example coherence means cache should be in sync okay if we have two cache both should be in sync otherwise it will have some other data it will have some other data it will cause confusion okay so how can that confusion happen suppose that there is two cores core 0 and core 1 each will have its own cache it's interconnected to the memory okay now see for example there is an operation called y0 is equal to x and x is a shared variable that has been initialized to 2 okay and y0 is a private variable owned by the core 0 okay y1 and yz are privately owned by core 1 now for example at time 0 seconds x is assigned to y0 that means x value is 2 2 will be assigned to y0 y0 value will be equal to 2 okay next is core 1 at the same time what's happening 3 into x which is 3 into 2 6 so y1 value is 6 in next time one what happens x becomes 7 okay and here some other statements are happening in time 2 what happens some other statements are happening here but here z1 is equal to 4 into x 4 into x is x can either be 7 or it can take the value from here only without uh, referring to the other cache so based on which core it is taking the x value from it will differ the answer will differ if it takes 7 it will become 7 for the 28 if it takes 2 as initially it has been uh, taken as 2 here right if it was not updated and it will take 2 only 4 to the 8 one answer is coming as 8 one answer is coming as 28 both will be different answers so this thing will come this thing is called as cache coherence if coherence is not there if sync is not there between the caches at that time the wrong answers can come okay that problem is called as cache coherence problem okay next is how does false sharing affect performance in multiprocessor system false sharing occurs when multiple processors access different variables that happen to lie on the same cache line there is one cache line and there are multiple variables and multiple processor access each of these variables in that case some will be old some will be new based on that some will access new some will access old in that case there will be different uh, values coming right and at least one processor writes to it and also another processor is changing the values also while other processor are accessing then it will become very much uh, different answers and the cache line keeps getting invalidated and reloaded it causes waste of time so the effects on performance would be increased cache time it will be very hard to get the values proper values from the cache you have to take from the memory frequent cache misses because the cache will not have the proper uh, data so cache miss will happen reduced parallel efficiency parallelly those things computation and all cannot happen lower throughput will be there the throughput which is the output we are get, going to get that will be low because cache is not able to produce proper data and unpredictable performance the pro programs may show poor and inconsistent performance due to continuous cache line bouncing between the uh, okay. The next one is describe the concept of non-determinism in the context of shared memory system. Okay. 
So shared memory system, as we discussed, there will be different CPUs and each will be accessing the shared memory, right? There will be one memory. And what is non-determinism in that? Non-determinism in the shared memory system refers to the situation where a program can produce different outputs or follow different execution paths even when the same output is given, input is given due to unpredictable interleaving on concurrent threads. If there are multiple instructions which are happening, multiple threads are running, each of these can access the data in a different path. Okay, means it will go through some other variable and access, it will go through some other function and access. Each will reach to a different conclusion. Okay, so that is the non-determinism. We cannot know which order the executions of the processes will happen and how the data will be going to altered. Okay, so key points are unpredictable execution order as I discussed now. Race condition means if two processes are there, they are trying to access the data. Whichever accesses the data first, they will be able to make change to it and the other process will get the updated data, not the original data, right? That is the race condition and scheduling variability, thread scheduling by the operating system is not fixed. Different scheduling sequences can lead to different behaviors. Timing dependencies, different times in which the ex uh, execution happens and the accessing of the data happens, different data can be uh, fetched. Okay, so that will be uh, a disadvantage. Okay. Result will be due to these factors, the same program may show different re results across different times, making the debugging and testing more challenging in the shared memory system. So that's one disadvantage of the shared memory system, the non-determinism. We cannot exactly know what it's going to access. Okay. Last question is analyze the advantages and limitations of one-sided communication in the distributed system. One-sided communication allows a single processor to directly read or write from the memory of the another process without requiring the target process to explicitly participate at that moment. So direct read and write can happen and this reduces synchronization overhead because only one process performs the communication operation. No other processor involved and it also lowers the overall communication cost because only one uh, process is going to communicate. Okay, But there are practical challenges such as the other process must know when it is safe to write in order to avoid the chances of writing when the other process is sending the data. That means it will alter the data and send it, right? That things can happen. And it also requires synchronization to make sure when some process is reading some data, no need to edit it, okay? Or use of a flag variable which must be repeatedly checked if it is increasing the overhead. And since there is no direct interaction between the two processors, Two processes errors in the remote memory option can be difficult to detect and debug. Okay, that is the advantage and limitation of one-sided communication in distributed system. Okay. So all for this video. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe to make more like this. And thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.